we're back and we just finished watching 1987's Planes, Trains, and Automobiles starring Steve Martin and John Candy. And we have the always fabulous and lovely Uncle Jay back with us for the review. Hello there. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jay. Hey, Uncle Jay. Uh, so I have to say that okay. I, I have to say this, Joanna. I love how Ray bobs his head and, and makes direct eye contact with me whenever the music starts. <laughs> 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 I just want to yes. say that it's 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 a bouncy tune. It's it a bouncy is. little yeah. tune. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I get into it too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an adult-only uh, review. So yeah, not 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 because the film was. You know, too sexually explicit or anything for the it's kids. It's just that it's, our kids they, were not they actually interested. watched it, but they have no interest in talking about, about it. it today, yes. So. Well, they half watched it. Somebody mm -hmm. had their face completely in their switch. Yeah. And the other one was deep in the laptop. So. Um, multiple distractions. Multiple distractions. That's the so way kids are raised today. After Thanksgiving, this is a movie about someone who's trying to get home for Thanksgiving and runs into a little bit of travel trouble and an unlikely companion on the way. Uh, I'd seen this movie a long, long time ago. I hadn't seen it in a long time. I think I saw it once in the theater. I may have kept, caught some of it on Channel 11 where I did most of my movie watching as a young child. And I just saw it today and it, it's, I feel like it still holds up. This is your first time watching it. Yeah, I've never seen this. This is the first time you've ever seen this yeah. movie. Yeah, can you I've believe it? I've never seen this movie, no. Yeah, and Jay's it's seen part it before. of my childhood. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's funny because it's like one of those like nostalgia things where it's like, oh, I forgot how good this was. I mean, it's a, it's a decent script. The two of them have amazing chemistry. It's funny because we just saw Midnight Run and they had like this really interesting chemistry where one of them is kind of the straight man and the other one's sort of like the annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And it sort of translates to this film where yeah, the same Steve basic Martin premise. Plays yeah. The straight man and John Candy is like the crazy, fun-loving, all over the place kind of guy who secretly has this little secret. Yeah. I guess you could say. So, what did you think about it, Jay? I mean, I, I love this movie. Um, there's, like, parts of it that are a little too, like, dramatic for me, but I don't think I thought saw that... I don't think I thought that the first time I saw the movie, but I've probably seen this movie, I don't know, 50 times yeah. over the years. It's, like, on at Christmas a lot, and or I guess it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. Thanksgiving a lot. So, um, but I, I love it. I mean, I think this is a good example of John Candy being a better actor than many people ever gave him credit for. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, he has that sort of uh, I mean, he's he's always uh, John, the John Candy that you remember most is like the jovial uh, right. hey, you know, my name is he always had a name like he always had a name like Chet or something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, he also could play like that sort of wounded guy too. Yes. You know? And not just in the sort of a, oh, golly shucks sort of way, but like you could see that he's a, a a guy who's got some some baggage on him, and uh, but he's trying to make the best of it. Yes, he's, he's trying to put a, a happy face on things. Right, optimist. Yeah, diehard optimist. Well, that's a, that's another interesting thing. Like, Dell is very Del. very layered in this movie, right? Del he's and Chet and <laughs> chick, but. Uh, I mean, he comes across as this, like, loud, boisterous, annoying, obnoxious person, but then by the end of the piece, you, you sort of, like, love him, even though he's given Neil nothing but grief and aggravation and heartache these this whole entire day, because I'm assuming this is, like, well, no, two days, right? Because the movie opens up, it's two days before Thanksgiving, so they've been on this road trip together for two days for now. two days, just... And suffering. just, yeah, well, Neil more than anyone, right? I mean, I feel <laughs> like, and it's funny because the Dell character, that scene where he's like, you know, you just gotta go with the flow. And he's, I guess because he's an optimist, he can make those sad situations work to his favor. Whereas someone like Neil would just be like in that parking lot of the, the car rental place where he just like loses it. Yeah, yeah. So, it's an interesting, like, contrast between the two, but the other nice thing was that 
Neil's humanity prevailed, right? He had spent so much time with this individual that he really took a liking to him. And when he really deep dove into the things that were said, he came to realize like, oh, there's something going on here. Yeah. There's something deeper. And yeah, I that's think, an excellent analysis. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the beauty of the story, right? Because it's not just a straight yeah. comedy or buddy adventure. I mean, I guess you could look at it in both ways. And it's there's a bit of dramatic in this. It's not played up, but when it does come through, it shines. That scene at the end where they're in the the waiting area of the bus stop. I mean, this. Oh, the train yeah, station, the train right? Station, yeah. And he admits to. I, I don't know. I feel like. I mean, are we spoiling this movie? It's from '87, right? It, yeah. Jesus, it's, it's, <laughs> if you yeah, haven't it's seen it by now, it's, 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 it's like almost <laughs> forty years old. Yes. Oh but my look, god. Look how Neil. Lord. Look how Neil changes and how dealing with. Dell's antics actually makes him closer to the point where he looks at his wife in a new way. Like when they open the door, they make the director purposely like frames right on her face and they look at each other and like it's like almost like it started fresh or something. Like somehow he's just altered like a lot of his stress because Dell really never does anything nasty or bad ever. He's just completely pure good chaos yes so he's just yeah. surrounded by hey, he's just a mess it's not his fault so if he wants to tear his socks off on a plane then like he should recognize that that's not particularly like you know <laughs> good etiquette the person yeah. next to you yeah good etiquette but he's just like i mean he's basically like a dalai lama type character yes yes, he's like, yes. whatever yeah. my dog, dogs are barking dogs are barking <laughs> tear them off <laughs> It's true, it's true. And that's, you know what, that's lovely too, because I think you're right. I think because of this experience and then like finding out that Marie has passed for eight years. Like, I remember the first time I saw this film, like what a gut punch that was, because I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. And it's funny because it was like, it was like watching it now, I think about like the sixth sense. Right, because it's like one of those movies where it's like, oh, well, all the clues were yeah, there, you but you didn't really, yeah. you know. But I guess when once you see it again, it's like, oh, well, it's right there, right? It's right there, and like I'm watching it, and I'm like, yeah, who travels with a trunk like that? Yeah, when they're just going I mean, his on. Whole, his whole, he's got a pillow. Yes, yes, he's right. Got pajamas. He's got yeah, the he's picture like of the wife. Several, yes. several pairs of underwear. Yeah, he's, yeah. But it, it's, he wasn't on a light trip. He right. Was, he was basically, yeah, bit, yeah, like a hobo. Yeah. He was yeah. riding the rails. Yeah. And it, and that, that scene, too, where, where I guess Neil's character also comes to understand what's going on when he says in the diner, he's like, oh, I haven't been home in years. In like, years. That's like, yeah, that was the big that. tell, right? I haven't been yeah. home in years. Yeah. And totally. it's like, you know, if you... If there's somebody home waiting for you, you can't wait to get home, right? Yeah, especially someone that he speaks so fondly of and yeah. lovingly about. Yeah, so I think, and I think having that experience also, like to your point, Jay, like opened Neil up to like better understand, better appreciate his wife. Like, you know, I have a good thing. I have this healthy wife. I've had great little kids. He had both of his parents. She had both of their parents. He had. People. And this guy's got yeah. nothing. And he's got nothing. Look how lucky I am. Yeah. And then you kind of reframe your perspective, perspective on things. Right. We, we can all get very negative and look at the negative things in our life. And sometimes it's difficult to, to see the positive. But that shift in perspective is what what moves one towards wellness, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's important, right? Because... Like in the beginning, like Neil just seems so tightly wound, right? Yeah. He's I mean, just like, like, and like almost two not episodes like, away from a stroke. At I don't know how tightly wound, but but like a really, really helpless to his situation. The fact that he has to sit there and wait for this idiot at the front of the boardroom to just stare at this this poster. And apparently he was doing it for hours yes. and never yeah. came to a conclusion about yeah. it. And Neil and everybody else had to sit there like, uh, is he going to come up with that? Is he going <laughs> to approve it or not? He's completely yeah. helpless. And he's like so tired. He's like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. But he can't do anything about it. Right. And the same, it's it's the same throughout the entire movie. It's, it's That's oh, you, I got to get on this plane. No, it's delayed. You got to wait. 
oh, I gotta, I gotta get on this train. Oh, you know, the it exploded. You, you, you have to get off. You have to trudge through this, this field now. You, you know, all of these horrible, horrible. I gotta things. get to the rental car. It's I gotta, not there. I gotta get to the rental car. Oh, I gotta, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta call wrong. up a hotel. Yeah. No, there's no more hotels. hotels. Yeah. And meanwhile, uh, Dell is just basically like, Go with the flow. hey, you know, I, I, I have a good buddy. He's gonna, he's gonna hook us up. And he does have all these good buddies. Granted, they're not in the best places ever. Right. But, I mean, the fact that he is, his entire life is making these tiny little relationships and going with the flow. Yeah. And never once, even when the car gets out on fire, the train explodes, throughout all of that, you never see Dell get down. He's never yeah. like, God damn sons of bitches. bitches. <laughs> never. Yeah. The only Tom, time he loses uh, it is in the hotel room when he's fighting with Neil. Because Neil's well, being very... Well, good friend. Yeah, well, Neil's being And, and even when he's fighting with Neil, at the end, he's just... He even says, you know... I like me. I like me. And and that's it's about, that's basically, you know, I, I am who I am. What I, what I say is what I say, and I mean what I say, and I like who I am. And I can't apologize for that. And... And that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, you're not going yeah, expl- to you're not going to explode. I mean, I, I would say Steve Martin uh, had every right to explode in that moment. Uh, <laughs> he was being Dell was being just a train wreck. <laughs> he like I don't know what he did to every single towel, and then he spilled beer all over the bed. And like <laughs> the funny thing was is that he spills beer all over all over uh, Steve Martin's side of the bed. And it's his fault. And instead of him laying on the beer, he Steve Martin still has the lay. On the beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. At least make that gesture. Sure. Like, you know what? I, I screwed up. I screwed up. I cleaned up the I beer. I'll lay at the wet spot. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. But no, he's like, I um, um, you know. He uh, did offer to change spots with him, but then Steve. He did. Was yeah. Like, at that point, he did. But he shouldn't have had to even <laughs> offer. He should have just, just been like, yeah, I'll as soon as Steve side. Martin came out of the shower, he should have been on the wet side. <laughs> and and <laughs> the fact that he used every single towel except that little dish rag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what's true. so funny? I'm watching the movie, and it's like I, you know, people like that that are they're just, just born with a horseshoe up their ass yeah. that just nothing bad ever happens to them. And God bless them, I guess. But yeah. it's and it's, it's and it's not even like I don't think he was being selfish. He's just he was just sort of oblivious. It's and plus yeah, he just oblivious. And plus he has he, that's another thing that like tells about his character is that he doesn't have anybody. It's been eight years since he's had family, apparently. So, I guess over eight years, that that sort of uh, etiquette or whatever just erodes away to the point because you're you're by yourself for so long. It's just right. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here on the couch with my legs spread wide. You know, <laughs> farting up a storm. <laughs> Yeah, and tear your socks off. <laughs> tear my socks off. Use all the towels. You Use just become towels, like yeah. an old bachelor type of dude. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, he's living a very transient lifestyle, right? He doesn't. He's not setting yeah. any roots down. He doesn't have a home anymore, whether no. by design or by bad yeah, luck or homeless. chance. Yeah, he's basically homeless. Yeah. But it's interesting because he keeps himself busy. It looks like, and he forges all these little relationships. Well, well, I mean, he's, he's I mean a, everyone he's a great that he, salesman. He's very congenial. He convinced everyone, all those people to put shower rings in their ears. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, all the people that he off. that he was friendly with, that he called favors on, they all seem to love him. Yeah. The hotel guy, the the guy that sent the son to go pick to him go up. Pick him up, yeah. <laughs> Who's gonna have his wife? <laughs> Who's gonna have his head? wife grip. She's tough. She's tough. She's small, but she's wiry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I I think it's a really great character study. This this film, like, Ooh. and it's funny because you think of John Hughes movies, you think about a lot of like teen angst. I mean. Yeah, definitely. It's funny. I think you and I had this conversation, but watching those movies now, with the exception of maybe some kind of wonderful, some of it is very cringy because there's a lot of very strange situations in some of those movies. And it's interesting because at the time that we're watching them in the 80s, it 
never even crossed yeah, never our crossed the right. You, yeah. you just thought, oh, this is, these people are acting badly. And, yeah. You know. But well, now, are you talking about like the over racism and stuff? Well, no. There's the, like, the racism, the homophobia, the the, the rape, <laughs> the rape. Well, you, yeah, you see it in planes, trains, and automobiles too. But I mean, there was a time when two straight guys that accidentally found out their hands were between, you know, two pillows would be grossed out by that. That doesn't make one homophobic. They're both just heterosexual. No, I'm no, 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 I'm, no, not, no I'm not. I'm not talking that. Like, that and, and this movie was nothing because yeah, that that, was, that, yeah, that to me to me comedy. that's to me that kind of humor is still fair play yeah because you yeah, of the yeah. characters you're dealing with or not it mirrors the age yeah, definitely for yeah sure. when we were young in that time frame watching it it wasn't even a blip yeah, on the radar but like ro now ro rolled off us you never really even thought about that or or you, you didn't realize that some people might be sensitive and have their feelings yeah. hurt by something. well yeah. it's not even that I mean like now as a, I I was having this conversation well it's funny so. 16 Candles plays every once in a while. And that was a, a, a movie for my youth. And I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it with the girls. And then, like, Long Farmer Long Ted. Long. <laughs> so then... Automobile? Yeah, well, not even that. But, like, Jake Ryan basically giving Ted his girlfriend. Yeah. It was like... What am I watching? This is like very, very bizarre. And then they wake up in the parking lot of her church, across the street from her church or something. And he's like, oh, did we, you know, do it? And she's like, yeah, I think so. And he was like, was I good? And she's like, yeah, I think you were. And I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, what? She was, ba yeah. yeah. She was yeah. basically raped. Yeah. And I was like... <laughs> Oh my goodness! Why did I never <laughs> catch this before? Well, don't forget, he was a minor. Yes, uh, that's another thing. Yes. Every, everybody's minors yes. too. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. she was eighteen. He got raped. Is what yeah. happened to him? And no, then, she he raped her, man. Well, he was a minor. I it doesn't the matter. Like <laughs> and then, the like, were... I think I, I. Oh, like while they were passed out, he had sex with her, and, and I think yeah, but so. neither of them were sure, right? They were. He was wasted too. No, she was the one who was she wasted. She was super wasted. Yeah. He, oh, yeah, that's right. He she was wasn't. like incoherent. And he, he was. Totally he was normal. totally coherent. He knew exactly what was oh, going yeah, on, and she was incoherent. Yeah. 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 yeah, they raped so each that's, other. <laughs> so that was like cringy, and then like weird science was on and I forced him to watch it because oh, he had never seen it smart. and I was like oh I love this <laughs> I, I saw it and that's like is that's it? garbage. It's, it's so terrible now. I was well, just I like, haven't oh seen my it in God. 30 years. Yeah, well, it yeah, so watch terrible? it now. It's terrible. It's, oh, my no, goodness. Chet's in it. I love Bill Paxton. Bill like, Paxton's Bill great. Paxton. Yeah, I love Bill Paxton. Oh, I hate that he he's comes out with, For God's sake, would you cover yourself? And he, like, rips off his towel and his bare ass. <laughs> <laughs> she is great. Yes, and then he turns yes. into, like, a fart beast. He's like, I'll be good, I swear. Yeah, well, it's funny because I remember seeing those in the theater. But it's, I don't know if it's sex. What was the problem? I like. Was it sexist? It's just a terrible one. It's just a terrible story. It just didn't it's, hold it's up. It's a terrible story. Well, uh, yeah, it's the characters. Ridiculous. And the main characters aren't like The characters are awful. Yeah, I mean, sexism is probably the least of its problems. Problems, yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s in it, rocking it. He is a jerk in that, too. Well, of course he's a. This was oh, back yeah. in the day when that's, that's, that's all he played. That's all he played, yeah. right? Exactly. Well, and that's all he was. Mm -hmm. I, did, I, I saw him on that uh, Dave Letterman Inside, whatever you know, where he interviews famous people, and Robert Downey Jr. is talking about, oh yeah, I was twisted in that, and then like by less than zero, he's he was just showing like back to school. He said, oh yeah, I would be passed out in my trailer, and they would have to come wake me up. I would jump into the scene, be like, what up, and then go back and get twisted, and then pass out again. That's like wow. how most of his acting career was. Oh wow. So you can assume he is on as many drugs as possible in that movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. No well, doubt. what was the now movie sober. that we saw? Oh, um, Drew Barrymore and Keanu Reeves. Oh, God. The, uh, Babes in Toyland. Babes in Toyland. She Toyland? is high as a kite. They, they made, they were, I think it was like oh, a really? Channel 4 version like, of yeah, Babes in Toyland. You know what Babes in Toyland is, right? March of the Wooden Soul it, Soldiers. Yeah, I've yeah. definitely heard of it, but I can't think of what it's about or anything. It's basically like it takes place in Toyland, and you know, there's all, all the like fairy tale characters are there. It, the original was like with Laurel and Hardy. Hardy. Yeah, and it was the the March uh, of the Wooden Soldiers. March of the Wooden Soldiers. Yeah, that's like another Christmas movie. Oh, anyway, so they they made a remake with Drew Barrymore and Keanu Reeves. Although Keanu Reeves, I don't think was even given billing. He was he was 
nobody knew who the hell he was. It was yeah. it was basically a Drew Barrymore movie, and she was high as a kite in every scene. Like it was like okay, we got to get ready. Action, you know, right before action. <laughs> Yeah, oh, really? I, and it was like, it was... It's, oh, yeah, she had a substance abuse problem And it was point. weird, because, like, you watch it now, and it's like, oh, yeah. Home it was like, was wow. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. pulled it together, too, though, I think. So that's yeah. Cool. yeah, I she's, mean, she's, she's definitely... She's definitely... In gotten the, herself in a better place, yeah, yeah. thank goodness. Because that could have wow. been a very horrible that, story, but, uh, that, yeah... I just, I just remember the final scene in that Babes in Toyland thing, and, and it was like a freeze frame where was, she's just basically supposed to, like... Oh, everything's just great, and and the look <laughs> on her face, the glassy-eyed, glazed look—it's it's terrifying. It's like you you chose uh -huh. that as the freeze frame to run the credits over. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's not the freeze frame, Jesus. <laughs> so I guess to get back to the the movie at hand, like, what, what what's the funniest part you guys thought was in the movie? The funniest part. Like what made, did any of them make you laugh out loud? A couple of places. Uh, one of my favorite scenes is, uh, I love that guy. What's his name? Michael McKean. Oh, the, the, the cop? The guy played the cop. He's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I'm going to have to confiscate this car. You <laughs> yeah. can't drive this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that guy. Uh, what else? I heard you laugh a couple of times. Uh, just the way tragedy just kept compounding and compounding <laughs> and compounding, like especially on the highway. Yeah. When he yeah, when he's driving along the highway and he's trying to take he first he throws a cigarette in the back of the car <laughs> unknowingly yes then oh and but prior to that he's like do he's like singing along to the song and just driving like a lunatic the entire oh, I, time I thought he was gonna. So and you think he's, he's going to die keyboards. then? He's playing keyboards. He's going, yeah. He's like playing. The, he's like paying no attention. <laughs> then, he the, then, he, then he throws the cigarette in the back. Then he wants to, it's getting hot, so he wants to take over his thing. He somehow traps one arm. <laughs> then he traps the other arm. <laughs> 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 then they have like this massive spin out. Finally, Steve Martin wakes up. He's just like, well, what's going on? Oh, everything's fine. He gets on the highway in the wrong direction. <laughs> Know, you're going the wrong way. He's like, how does he know which way we're going? Yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. Oh, sorry. Like that oh, that okay. scene to me, that sequence was great because yeah. it was just it was just layer <laughs> upon layer upon layer upon yeah. layer. And then it just culminates with the car, car bursting into flames. <laughs> yeah, and you and know his wallet is inside of it. You uh, yeah. yeah. And John Candy's the devil. He's like, ah, oh. <laughs> 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 that was that was yeah, great. That, was that, that, that's that's, that sequence. sequence was my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. yeah me too. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's the. I think they even turn into like skull beasts. Don't they turn into? Like, they turn into this. Yeah, yeah, they they. You see like <laughs> them both as skeletons, and then John that's Candy awesome. is just Satan, <laughs> <laughs> just laughing, that's laughing great. maniacally. That is great. Uh... He was so good. I wish he had lived yeah, longer. Yeah, I miss John Candy. John Candy. He was always great. Yeah, yeah he, he really was. was. Except for the very last one where before he paid his final price, uh, that Canadian bacon movie was just, oh, it was horrific to watch. He, he's so bloated and just looks unwell and you just feel terrible for him the whole time and it's not funny and then he just died, I think right after that movie. Oh, wow. All right, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even bother watching it. It's just terrible. I never, I don't think I ever saw that. But he was great in Uncle Buck. I love. Oh, him. he's yeah. fantastic in Uncle Buck. Yeah. Yeah. Even That's like, even like even the little tiny roles. roles. I loved him in that. Like if, if you go watch that so again, though, it's it could be offensive. He assaults a teenage. He assaults multiple minors. <laughs> he, but they he, had it coming. He shames, That's he, no, shames, <laughs> he shames the appearance of a lady with a mole, even though she's mean. He does multiple things that would still be attacked in today's society. That's true. So, I mean, it's, isn't that strange? Like, stuff well, like that? Well, you know what? You want to argue the, for him, the, right? No, but the thing the thing about that I is... Do. No, no, no. The, the thing about that is when he attacks people, he's, he's attacking, attacking them the and they deserve it. I, okay. The problem, <laughs> the problem with some of these other things is people getting attacked and they're not really... It's not they're not really warranted or they're using attacks that are, like, completely unrelated. Well, that lady's mole has nothing to do with how snooty she is. She but she was, she mole. was, she was a nasty person, so she got. 
Hey, I'm on your side, he, he but won, I'm just he won after, after he won after every, everything with every tool in the toolbox. Yeah. Well, yeah. I get to. He never insulted her for being a woman, though. No. No. no, he just told her to go like right. go down to the stripper pole and like have a rat gnaw the thing off her face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but like I get to determine who deserves things. Like that's a, that's that's the real question. Who determines who deserves it? I guess the audience. No? The audience, yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. Well, is the is the audience like the Twitter mob? I hope it's not. Uh, it may I don't. Be. I don't think there would be any problem with that scene because, like I said, the, she deserved it, and she was not being attacked for her gender or anything else. She was being attacked well, no because she was for Soul Man. Yet, she was. So, she was mean, oh, Soul Man! Get out of here with Soul Man. <laughs> Colin Powell is like in his house, like waiting to be lynched and killed. Why isn't this in the machine? I know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> this is empty. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> she thought we weren't recording any of this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? We're just like, Ray's just playing a trick on us. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the the actual chip is like like a fingernail compared to this thing. Oh, okay. oh you got a micro? Hey there! How are you, favorite girl? He's saying, he's, he's saying hello, how are you? Hi. Oh, she can't understand me. Hi! I can hear him. Can you hear me? Hi, Olive. Let her hear me. Ah, I have to plug in another set of headphones. Anyway. Damn you. <laughs> My children. <laughs> Sell them your children. So anyway, well, we should probably wrap this one up. We're hitting a half hour now. Oh, stop. Oh, uh, we've tangentialed. This is yeah. a long one. Should yeah. we listen to the music again? Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Who Get else did we talk over. about? Let's talk about Steve Martin's career now. Steve's a crazy man now, but he was good for he he was a good eighties, nineties mule. He was excellent. Seventies even. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, we were saying to G that uh Steve has always looked like an old man. Always had the He's always hair. had gray hair. And always you know, even when I saw him on Saturday Night Live when I was a kid, he always yeah. had gray hair. And he must have been like always. in his thirties. Right? Or late no, not late twenties, maybe thirties. Yeah, who knows how old he was? I don't even know. I, I'm assuming he's like 70 now. <laughs> he's got to be at least, yeah. At least, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he's decrepit. <laughs> but he looks good for a 70 year old. Like, you guys yeah. age better than women. Well, he's so wealthy as hell. Yeah, we yeah. we both did age pretty well so far. We've still got to make it through the 50s and try not to turn into trolls during that time. It's you difficult won't. to say. You won't. Eventually, you all turn. Everyone turns into a troll. Eventually, go look at any ninety-year-old people. No one looks rational. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. You know what? Yes. You know what? Actually, actually. Yes, Joey. I'm going yes. to say Raquel Welsh. She's like no, I don't in her know what 80s, she looks like. and she doesn't well, look terrible. Even Sophia Loren, kind of hot in her late eighties, kind of barely, yeah. but she's like a one in a million. Yeah, you're yeah. Call, you're calling out like gorgeous beauties that got lucky as hell, yeah. but they still look like troll like creatures. Yeah, hmm. Sophia's looking pretty pretty twisted at this point. Yeah, I'd have to look up Raquel Welch and see what she looks like. Yeah, we just saw Raquel. We just we just saw Sophia Loren. Loren, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's I definitely mean, she, older. She looks she looks old now. Yeah. Oh well, Raquel Welch looks suspiciously attractive still. Yeah. That's supposed to be old. She old she has she's she, had she, work she's got done, some though. decent plastic surgery. Done yeah, she's herself. had some work done because I was like, oh, there's yeah. no way. Like some some of them really just butcher the. Yeah. I, don't know I was so upset when I saw Renee Russo. I was like, what happened to you? Oh, did she do something terrible? She could, we saw that Jake Gyllenhaal movie on Netflix, right, with her, and I was like, she didn't go to the good plastic surgeon. You got to go to the whoever the hell Michelle Pfeiffer goes to. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer did Michelle something good. Michelle Pfeiffer. Is, she's young though, still. She hasn't reached into troll land. No, but she's it's weird. It's work. weird when they start getting it done when they're like. Like in their 30s or 40s, they start. Like Nikki Cox. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Lord. but I have to say that, you know, part of it, I mean, I, they are ultimately to blame, but I mean, the pressure out here on females, as I understand it, is enormous that pretty much after 30, the roles evaporate. That's yeah. so crazy. That's so, so crazy. for women, yeah. not, for, not for men, they can work well into their 50s. Or later. 
as leading men, I mean. Oh, it's like yeah, a superficial yeah, yeah. world, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the women are pretty much relegated to like the older sister or the married mom or whatever. Although things are changing at this point, it's everything so progressive. It's not even mirroring reality at any at any rate anymore. So I mean, who knows? Yeah. You know, so I'm sure that'll show up soon. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, I, I think it depends, but it's it's interesting. Like someone like what's. Who's the one that I think is a hot fox? Um, Helen Sophia Mirren. Lerner. Helen Mirren. Oh, she's oh, hot. I Helen think she's Mirren. hot too. She's like lovely. I, I like she, she is pretty not attractive. have she doesn't she didn't have anything done to herself. She, she doesn't look like she, she she may have done like minor little tiny things, but no, she, she did something. She does. There's no way she looks like she, she's too fair skinned to have been that that unlined. I mean, she could have avoided the sun. She avoided the sun, yeah. Yeah, some people... Maybe. Some I people layer up. Not many uh, Helen Mirren bikini shoots that we're aware of, so... Yeah. True. She is English, so she could have just been, like, in a parasol the entire time. Although she lives in Montana now for, like, the last 20 years, because she married that Taylor Hackford guy. Mm-hmm. So. I saw my... I felt, you know who Debbie Mazar is? She's yeah. looking to now. She, she used to be so. I always thought she was so hot. Well, I saw her not the other day, but a couple of years ago. She used to be friends with Cat, this lady who's in all sorts of movies you've seen, who is my neighbor. So she, like, I walked out and accidentally like bumped into Debbie Mazar, who has these blindingly gorgeous eyes, which I've always fallen for since Cammy. And like, I was, I hear myself blurt out, "I love you," <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is the first time I've ever been starstruck." <laughs> And she just starts laughing hysterically. She's like, well, that was a welcome. And I was like, yes, hello there. Ignore me completely. Always liked you. Great actor. She's like, oh, I don't, people don't always even recognize me. And I'm like, oh, well, I recognize you. Then I go Google her. She's married to some billionaire Italian, like, like, you know, some, some guy that like you just lost. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Aw, oh, damn it. She ain't trading her husband in for you. Never. <laughs> uh, let's let's wrap. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Uh, on All a right. scale of one to ten, what would you give it? On a scale of one to ten, I would probably give it like a seven, seven and a half. You're I, out of your mind. I I would give it an eight, eight and a half. I think the the script is really tight. The character development is lovely. The two of them play off each other so well. It's nice to see this kind of buddy road trip movie that becomes this like almost like this lovely friendship and kind of love letter to just fam like relationships in a way not necessarily familial relationships but just relationships in general and how being a good person when you're a good person good things come to you which is definitely the case with Dell and hopefully Neil picks up some of that what do you say Jay yeah, I like how both characters change and they change each other, both in positive ways. And what starts as an extremely abrasive relationship is probably, if there was a second, you know, sequel, thank God there wasn't, would probably have been, you know, they probably become friends and, you know, Dell moves in next door and busts in their door every five seconds like Dennis the Menace. But I'd say I give it a... a Kool-Aid man. I, I think you have to take this movie for the time it was written. So, like, yes. some of the jokes are too tame, some are going to seem mildly offensive, but you have to take it from the time it was written when certain things were acceptable. You can only judge some, a, a work of art by the mores of its day. So I would say this is a 9.3 and is, you know, it's, I think one of the last great showings of John Candy yes, um, doing sure. some actual acting yeah. and pulling it off. Like, fair, you know, he's not a, br he's not the most brilliant actor ever, but he's got some range. He did well. Absolutely. He's funny. Agreed. Agreed. And it's, it's interesting because I think it's such a nuanced performance that, I think if this movie had come out today, he probably would have gotten like a best supporting actor nod. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I wouldn't do it for. I, I think it depends so. on other movies came out. That's true too. It would depend on. But I think I think the person that he was, the actor that he was, the likability factor. I think he could have gotten nominated, and it would be. It, and I it, think they always reserve like the the supporting actors for like comedic. I don't think a, a comedic actor would ever be like the best actor. If, if he had claimed that he was mildly mentally retarded, he would have almost certainly won. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. No, like if Dell had been known to have, well, I was diagnosed as a child, just that one extra line, boom, Oscar. 
done. Yeah. Possible. <laughs> Possible. Definitely. Possible. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They did. They did the algorithm in Tropic Thunder, and it, it pans out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the lynch mob for Tropic Thunder. I don't know. Nobody seems to care or notice anything about that movie. No. I, mean, I, I think. I think the thing about Tropic Thunder is is they. Um, it's the intent. They, they made it clear. They made the intent. They made the intent very clear. clear. Right from the they because were, it, because it was very players. it was very uh, the humor was I mean the humor was very in your face. Yes. In Tropic Thunder and very self deprecating. It was very self deprecating and the intent of what they were trying to do with Robert Downey Jr. and yeah. uh, basically every single character uh, Jack yeah. Black's Definitely character done. every every single one of them Vietnam vets they were trying <laughs> they they made that intent absolutely clear it was clear. pretty much written on the tin yeah. and. Uh, I think that's yeah. why it, it 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 hasn't gotten that sort of uh, backlash. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to do that now because no. even no. even with something that the intent is completely labeled, people are still gonna get angry. And so long as you're even if there's only like a, a half dozen of them on Twitter, as long as they're loud, unless they, they, it's... they get their way. All right. Oh my gosh. All right. So that's it from us, and we will come back soon with another review. Thank you, Uncle Jay. When uh, very good to be here. Yes, maybe we'll pick something horribly violent to review next time. Okay. Oh, no, nothing scary though. If it's violent, nothing it can scary. be violent. No, no, no. What about Just, Predator? No, that's Predator, what I was thinking. Violent, if right? that's, Predator, yeah, Predator's if fun. that's if that's what you want your pick to be, I'm all. And the down best part about that. it is the kids won't know that it's it's secretly about the predator. Like the whole movie, you just think it's like a bunch of commandos go in and like do a job. Don't forget that. Like the first half of the movie, that's all it is. Uh, we've seen so much inappropriate stuff with the, the, these the, children. The, I the, the children would be absolutely fine with yeah. predator. They, There's yeah. a twist. I mean, I is what love I'm saying. predator so much. You Have you seen predator? Seen all right, we're we're, we're going on. Like we're, we can't even say goodbye without a tangent. All right, <laughs> good night. Good, good night. night. Bye. Good night.